Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. As always, if it's your first time here, it is good to see you and I hope you're going to stick around. Okay, well, welcome to our midweek video. Yet again, I'm afraid it's another studio video this week. Uh, I've still got my injuries, so I've not been able to get out to a game. And there wasn't a game on at my local site, unfortunately, this weekend, so I couldn't get any third person footage as it were <laughs> uh, however we'll do another studio video we always do the two videos a week regardless as many of you that follow the channel will know normally get a video out on a wednesday midweek and um, we'll normally get our normal regular studio video out on a saturday at the weekend um we're just going to try and do a short one again today another beginner's video if you like another introduction video change of scenery again we're back in my uh, man cave, as I call it, <laughs> in my room with all my stuff. So I hope that's okay for you. And I hope you're going to enjoy this video. As I say, this is mainly aimed at, uh, at beginners or newer players. But, you know, there might be some information here for you if you're an experienced player and, you know, it, you're just starting to look into the tech side of things or the upgrading side of things. So what we're going to look at today, well, today we're going to have a look at motors in AEGs. Now, a couple of disclaimers before we start. I'm not gonna go massively in depth into all of the different types of motors, the different brands, the benefits of those brands, and all the various modified and hybrid motors that are out there, because that's something that you can do a lot of research in. There is a lot of, of motors available for our AEGs, lots of motors available, um, so, you know we're going to cover the basics here today and the other thing that i must make as a disclaimer is by no means am i an expert on aeg motors uh, i like to think i'm knowledgeable on a lot of things to do with tech with uh, AEGs and working on our replicas um, but motors motors is one of those areas where you can go really in depth and if you start looking up terms like tpa um, Frank and Torque and stuff like that, you'll see what I mean. Some people make their own motors. Um, you can really go to town with it. You get into electrical efficiency, energy efficiency, energy transfer, reducing heat, that type of thing. You can go very in depth into that type of thing as you can with any electrical system. But here, we're just looking at the basics. So if you want to get more in depth in it after watching this, then that's great. Because <laughs> maybe in the future you can help me out. <laughs> um, but there is plenty of information available uh, online. There's plenty of other videos on more in-depth details on specific motors. So what we're going to look at is the basics to get you started on what you're looking for if you're going to upgrade your motor, if you need to replace your motor, and basically what, what we're looking at when we're on about motors. Okay, well, first of all, a couple of parts to identify on a motor if you're buying one. Let's uh, let's have a look at this one here. I've got a few motors here. Uh, a lot of them are standard motors that have come out of builds that I've done. Uh, most of them, as you probably can gather, come in one of these boxes with a really stiff clip on them. Okay. Now this, as you can probably gather, is a classic army motor. And they don't come out of the box very easily. I don't know why they make these boxes so tight. Probably to keep them safe in transit. So as you can probably see there, that's a classic army motor. Now, when I don't find the parts of the motor, obviously you've got the cam, which is where all the internals of the motor are held, the bindings and the magnets. But we're not, like I say, going to go that in depth to it. Um, all we're looking at here is we've got your pinion gear, which is a gear on the end here. Now, pinion gears can be fastened in two different types of ways. This one is what we call an O-type pinion. And you also get a D-type pinion. I hope you can make that out on camera, but it's just a solid ring. And the pinion gear is either pressed onto the shaft, or it'll be held in place with a little grub screw, or a locking screw as we call it. And if that was to come loose, and it's not tight on there, there's nothing to stop the shaft spinning and the pinion gear not. You also get a D-type pinion gear, and in a D-type you'll have one flat edge on the shaft, and your locking nut will go against that flat edge, 
and the idea is is that if anything comes loose or the locking nut fails the the grub screw if it fails uh, then it, it should still rotate because of that flat edge because it's not perfectly round so that's your first part you've got your pinion gear which will be attached with either an O type or D type pinion gear and shaft so if you are going to replace a pinion gear make sure you get the correct one an O type or a D type you'll be able to tell quite easy when you look at the end of the shaft there okay now next here we have the the spring that spring is what allows you to adjust it when it's in the grip that's just all that does and then you have your shaft now you get two different types of shaft you get a long shaft motor or a long type motor which is what this one is this classic army is a long type and you also get short type now you can get some little bit in betweens um, but on the whole the main ones we're dealing with is long and short this here oh, came out a bit easier this here is a short type motor so instantly you can see the difference one has a long shaft on it one has a short shaft on it the cans are very similar um, but the main thing we're looking at is long and short now if you were to get a long type motor these are most commonly used on version 2 gearboxes. I believe they're used on version 1 boxes as well. But the version 2 box, as many of you may already know, is a very common gearbox used in a lot of different replicas. But predominantly used in AR based replicas like the M4, the M16, that type of thing. They will have a long type motor in it. The short type motors are used in a lot of different gearboxes such as the version 3 version 6 version 7 uh, i believe they all use a short type motor most commonly for a version 3 gearbox you're going to find one of these in use with an ak replica or a g36 which both use version 3 gearboxes and therefore use a short type motor but them are your two differences so ak would, and G36s are going to be a short type and version 2 such as an MP5 maybe or an AR replica they're going to be a long type so that takes us down there the cans and the internal construction of the motor um, you, you can get really in depth with that but you'll hear banded about TPA sometimes uh, basically I'm, I'm not too sure whether it's the correct terminology but TPA is terms um, is turns of wire is what it's referring to around the armature and um, the, the idea is is that the more wire turns you have the stronger the magnetic field and basically you end up with a high torque motor so if you're ever looking at motors and they're labeled as tpa then generally the higher the number then the higher the torque the motor will be and that takes us on to the next part of motors as well and if you're looking inside the can and we're on about turns then the higher number of tpa is higher torque and that's where you get your next difference in motors you can have high torque high speed or balanced um, in some cases like i say we'll not go too much into the franken torque motors or the custom motors there are a lot of high-end motors out there that can do both they'll do high torque and high speed but they will usually be very pricey and a lot more extreme but for standard motors if you're looking at spending around about 35 british pounds for, for an upgrade motor 40 british pounds you get shs motors that type of thing rocket motors you'll be looking at either high torque or high speed that's that's what you'll have advertised now the the basic ruling on on those is is high torque basically means that the the motor can pull a heavier spring uh that's that's the easiest way of looking um it, it's not going to have a higher full speed um as it were it won't have as many rpm when it's running at full speed but it will hit that full speed a lot quicker because it's high torque and it can pull a heavier spring now me personally i tend to use exclusively high torque motors i've found that the trigger response with a high torque motor is much more effective than what i get with a high speed motor but you'll find differing opinions of that online as well um, but th that's that's what we're looking at with high torque. Generally, 
it produces more torque so it can pull a heavier spring or it can act on a spring with a lower ratio of gear set. Because if, for example, you lower the ratio on your gears, then the strain on the motor is higher. So a high torque motor can counteract that strain much more easily than high speed. And again, then you get into electrical efficiency because that's not going to generate as much heat or put as much load on your battery or electrical system because the motor can cope with it better. Um, the high speed motors will reach a higher RPM, um, but they will have less TPA, they'll have less turns, and they, they basically are going to work slightly differently. Ultimately, they would produce a higher rate of fire would be your initial thoughts on it, but that's not always true with high speed motors because they can't pull as much torque. So if you've got a high speed motor with a low ratio of gear set, that high speed motor might struggle with that gear set to pull the spring back, which basically means you're gonna generate more heat, put more load on your battery, and ultimately get less performance. Um, so high speed motors tend to be used with standard 18 to one gear ratios. Um, but if you're looking at an upgrade motor for a standard replica, you possibly wouldn't encounter those issues the same, but I've still noticed a, a phenomenal difference in performance by putting high torque in. So high speed, I don't think they use quite as much these days. Um, high torque seems to be what most people use, certainly what I use, um, and definitely my preferred motor. But that's the difference. Um, balanced basically means it's a balanced motor so you've got a compromise between torque and speed um so you you know it's it's not got the best of both worlds as it were it's kind of compromised between the two so you're not trading speed for torque and you're not trading torque for speed you're kind of trading them both off if that makes sense so so that's that's your different parts there and then as we move down the motor obviously you've got your base cap and you've got your electrical contacts which are normally color coded for red for your positive lead sometimes they'll put black on for the negative uh, but most of the time they will leave it clear um, so you know, just to recap your pinion gear you get o type and d type you've got your shaft long or short you've got your can which inside has your turnings and your magnets generally if you come across TPA numbers, the higher the number, the higher the torque. Um, high torque motors, as we've discussed there, can pull a heavier load. High speed motors eventually spin up to a higher RPM. Um, and then at the very end, we have our end cap and bell and our electrical contacts. So that's basically the breakdown of what the, the motors look like. Now... We discussed there the difference of high torque, high speed and balanced. There is also a number of specialised motors um, which you, 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 <laughs> you might want to look into in the future. Um, one of them you've probably noticed here is this type of motor. Um, this is what we call an induction motor. You might more commonly see it referred to as a brushless motor. Uh, brushless motors basically as the name suggests they don't have brushes uh, an electrical motor will have brushes brushes which connect with the commutator which causes it to turn now again as a beginner's guide i don't want to go into too much detail about how the electric motor functions um, but to put it basic an induction motor will usually offer you far better performance than an equivalent brushed motor now all these motors here all these standard motors whether they're high torque or high torque or high speed or balanced they will be brushed motors the vast majority of motors in replicas will be brushed i would say that 100 percent of standard motors that come with a replica will be brushed However, you've probably seen a lot of talk about Warhead Industries and their brushless motors. Brushless motors aren't new, um, but they're relatively new to Airsoft. You, they've not been mainstream. They've never really caught on. However, these are doing really well. Um, now, I've done a lot of testing with this one in various replicas, and I've always been impressed with the performance. Now, I mentioned earlier that sometimes you can get the best of both worlds, high torque and high speed. 
That is certainly the case with a brushless motor. And this warhead motor can certainly produce phenomenal speed and at the same time can pull heavy torque to a heavy spring. Now, the one proviso I would say to be very careful with with a motor like this is one, they are very expensive. Um, there's no easy way of putting it. They are expensive. They're not cheap. So I'm not saying it's not worth it. What I am saying is, is that you do get extreme performance with these. So I, I have instances where if you put this in an otherwise standard replica, you could run the risk of, of damaging something. If, if your replica's not on point and you put this extreme speed motor in, your shimmings off or anything like that, it could damage something within the gearbox. It's certainly going to cause premature wear because your trigger response and your rate of fire is going to increase greatly. But it's really easy to put it in. I did do a previous video on how to change your motor. I'll link that in the description if you haven't seen it already. But it's a very easy job. And like I say, with one of these, you, you're instantly going to notice the performance difference. How long it'll last, <laughs> that's another story. But you will certainly notice a performance improvement. So that's that's motors. You can go extreme, go brushless, go with a Franken torque, go with modified motors. There's a lot of motors out there if you go to the extreme end that will cost you a great deal more than otherwise standard motors. So they're one avenue to go down. If you get the brushless, you get the best of everything we've said. Other options are, is you can just get a standard replacement motor, which will just be the same as the one you've took out. You can go for high torque, you can go for high speed. Thing to remember is, if you're going for any kind of replacement motor, make sure you get the correct shaft length, so long or short, that's the main two you need to look at. So double check you're getting the right one there. And then decide whether you want high torque, high speed or balanced. My recommendation for most builds is a high torque motor. You get better trigger response and it usually improves your rate of fire as well. Even if it's not going to have as many RPM as a high speed motor. The high torque motors put less stress on your electrical system as well. Other terms you might hear banded about is neo magnets, which basically is neodymium magnets. They're a very strong magnet, they create a very strong field. Usually you'll find those in a decent high torque motor. And you'll also maybe hear about ferrite magnets. They're just standard magnets. They're not as strong as neo magnets. Certainly a decent motor should have neo magnets in it. You can usually tell by grasping the pinion and if it spins freely and it's easy to turn, then that's a low torque motor and possibly doesn't have neo magnets in it. Everybody goes on about them, but if your motor's performing fine, it probably has those in any way. Uh, Neodymium magnets certainly create a much stronger magnetic field, which is all part of how motors work. But again, I don't want to get dragged into going on about how they work. So that's, that's it. In a nutshell, that's what you need to know. If you want any more information about motors from myself or if you have any comments for me or any questions for me about airsoft in general then do drop me a comment below i will always respond to a comment might not get back to you straight away but i will always respond i hope you found this video useful i hope you found the information useful and if you do have any other questions as i say do do let me know um, if you'd like me to go more in depth on on any of these products I'm happy to do that. But apart from that, that's a basic beginner's guide to AEG motors. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.